Hello, AE fam, and welcome to Are You on Evo Entertainment? So, guys, you're welcome to another live session. And today we'll be discussing a very hot topic known as mental slavery. I'm going to wait a bit for more people to join us. Jonas, hey, <laughs> how are you? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm waiting for Aya to connect with us and she has network issues right now. So I'm trying to connect her. Hmm. Stay with us guys. I'm trying to connect Aya to the live feed and she'll be joining us very soon. Today we'll be talking about a very important topic mental slavery mental slavery if you're watching if you're joining us can you please comment and tell us where you're watching from we would like to hear where you're watching from which part of the world are you stuck in right now let us know in the comment section comment and let us know where you're stuck at i'm waiting for a few seconds to join Ayo. Okay. Anyway. So guys, where are you joining us from? Thank you so much for joining us today again on this live show. And today, like I said, we'll be talking about mental slavery. Mental slavery. Now, this word was coined in 1938 by Marvy, hmm, let me see, by Garvey, by Marcus Garvey, and he was a Jamaican. Now, we know that slavery, like the transatlantic slavery, officially ended in the 19th century. But why is it that this is the 21st century and we are still underdeveloped. Africa is still underdeveloped. Our minds are still underdeveloped. Okay, during the slavery period, we were, our ancestors were physically chained. But now, it's not about the physical chains. It's now about mental slavery. What is happening now is mental slavery. Mental slavery is an invisible chain. You cannot see the chains. The chains are not in your hands. They're in your mind. And this mental slavery is a very, very big issue because it spreads from generation to generation. Our ancestors went through physical slavery, but till today, we're still suffering mental slavery. We're still suffering from post-traumatic slavery syndrome. Ali Danger, I'm from Finland, but big up Mama Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So as I was saying, this is mental slavery. Now, when we were growing up as kids, our minds start to form. We start to develop our minds. And there are a lot of things that we learn subconsciously from schools, from the mass media, from social media, from our friends. There are so many things that we develop in our minds. There are so many perspectives that are being formed from childhood. 
Now look at the educational system in Africa, for example. How many times are we being taught our history? Anytime we are being taught about African history, the only thing we hear about is slavery, colonization. Then you turn on the TV, you turn on the radio, the mass media channels, and what do you see there? The same messages. You see people that are not of your skin tone. You see them defining people that are not of your skin tone as a standard of beauty. You see them portraying Western countries as the ideal countries. You see them portraying Western people as the ideal people, as the standard of beauty, as the civilized people, as the mini idols that we should grow up to become like, that we should emulate, that we should that we should look up to, to be. Um, what is Aya saying? Oh, okay. So, Aya will be joining us very soon. So, when we're growing up, the educational system is teaching us about slavery, is teaching us about colonization, is teaching us about how the whites um, are better than us and what our forefathers went through. We check the mass media. The mass media is telling us about why we should think that we're inferior and that we should aim to be better. We should aim to be like the stereotypical person they're showing us in the mass media. So all these things form in our minds and we grow up to subconsciously behave like that. These are not things we, there are several things that we do as human beings. We don't do it consciously. We do it subconsciously because that is how we grew up. For example, you see a white person and you automatically think that this person is beautiful or this person is brilliant. You automatically think that this person is from a rich country or this person is rich. You automatically think that this person is healthy. And on the other end is because Africa and Africans has been portrayed to be what? Inferior. We are being taught that Africans are equal to being inferior, being low-minded, have low IQs, and different stereotypes like that. And then we're being taught that Africa has no history. That is what our oppressors keep telling us, that Africa has no history. Africa is a dark continent, and Africans are full of cannibal savages. And that is what we grow up to believe. And this is the cause of mental slavery. This is the cause of mental slavery because we keep getting this information, this misinformation, we get, keep getting this misinformation and indirectly we start acting them out because it becomes part and parcel of us. It becomes part and parcel of our minds. This is mental slavery. Now, if I don't know if you've heard of um, Bob Marley's song, Redemption Song. Have you guys heard of the Redemption Song? If you've heard of it, let us know in the comment section below. Bob Marley said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. No one, no one but ourselves can free us. So even if the chains, the physical chains, were being removed from our forefathers and different papers have been signed to officially end physical slavery, there is still the mental slavery there. And no other person can free us from that except ourselves. We are the only ones that can free ourselves from mental slavery. Now, when physical slavery was ending and colonization also was ending we were given independence 
And this is like a facade. We keep singing national anthems. We keep saying, oh, we gained independence. This country gained independence. For example, Nigeria gained independence from UK. This country, um, Cameroon gained independence from France. This country gained independence from Portugal, things like that. But the real question is, are we actually independent? Are we actually independent? Let me read some of the, oh, Jeff Ngoi, you're watching from South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Mohammed Salah, right words. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Evo. Abdullahi. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Muna Hassan Mire. Hello, I am Muna. I am from Somalia. Thank you so much for joining us from Somalia. You are Yezu Octave, Rwanda here. Thank you for joining us from Rwanda. Hello to Rwanda. Hello, Amza. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys so much for your messages. We really love that you're supporting us. So as I was saying, are African con countries actually independent? We keep singing the national anthems. We keep celebrating independence every year, every year. But are we independent? We still see a lot of African countries being controlled by the West. And the African leaders we have are just figureheads. The people calling the shots, the people controlling the economy, the people controlling the price of gas, the price of our goods, are all Westerners. Most of our products are imported. How many African countries are producing their own products? Most of our goods are imported. And then we keep saying, we're independent. How? Then several um, English-speaking countries in West Africa formed an association called Commonwealth with the United Kingdom. How is it Commonwealth? Do we share a Commonwealth? Can we compare UK's economy to Nigeria's economy? Can we compare UK's economy to Gambia's economy? How is that Commonwealth? Till today, every year, French colonies pay colonial tax to France. We say we're independent and that colonialism is over. But what we're going through right now is new colonialism. For French colonies to still be paying France billions of dollars every year, are we actually independent? Ayo is with me right now. Let me join her to this conversation. Hello, Hello, Hello. Ayo. How are you? My Hi. network has been so terrible. I've been oh. trying to find the right spot to stay. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Welcome. Sorry, guys. Sorry for joining you late. I hope you can hear me properly. Yes, I can hear you properly. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I was telling them that our topic today is about mental slavery and i was explaining to them what mental slavery is and that even though physical chains are being broken when colonialism ended we still have invisible chains tying us down and these invisible chains are mental and they've been passed from generation to generation sure sure so i am it is so sad yeah Hmm. So yeah, it is so sad that um, in our day to day, we still experience slavery and the, it's worse when it's mental because then it happened internally. The pressure is not just from the outside, but it's like we are putting pressure on ourselves from within until we can change our mindsets till we can equip ourselves positively, there's no one that can break this mental slavery but ourselves. There's a popular saying that um, we actually hear from Bob Marley's song, but it was actually Marcus Garvey that made that statement. He's a Jamaican. And he said, emancipate 
yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Like that is so powerful. Most of the time as Africans, as Blacks, we are waiting for external um, freedom. We're waiting for external praises. We're waiting for someone from another race to say, oh, you guys, you're beautiful, or you guys, you're doing well. But no, the change, the mental freedom has to start from within. The appreciation of ourselves has to start with ourselves, with a Black person complimenting a Black person, not waiting for the outside world, for Europe, for America, to validate us. Yes, that's the word. We keep waiting for validation, external validation. But we need to really stop this and stop the victimization. There's something called victimization, like when, as a Black person, if you're in a gathering with maybe um, people of different race and color, there's a tendency to start feeling uneasy, even without them saying anything. Hmm. You start to project so many things outward, like what are they thinking? Are they thinking about my skin color? Are they thinking, why do I have big lips? Are they thinking, you know, this internal trauma starts and war. And they're not even probably saying anything. And sometimes a black person, a white person can say, oh, I love your braids or I really love your skin color. And still you're not happy because you feel they're just still mocking you um underneath hmm. so we have to learn to take praises and take um good compliments from people of different races without feeling the pressure of are they lying are they just saying it because oh that is the best thing they have to say so that i can feel among as africans we should stop trying to feel among, we should stand in our own power and just interact with people freely. This would really help to break away the mental chains. The mental chains. Okay, I want to contribute and um, read a quote by Martin Luther King. And Martin Luther King say, says, as long as the mind is enslaved, the body can never be free. Hmm. Psychological freedom and a firm sense of self-esteem is the most powerful weapon the, against the long night of physical slavery. Sure. Psychological freedom and a firm sense of self-esteem is the most powerful weapon against the long night of physical slavery. Sure, sure. And what Martin Luther King is trying to say here is it's very, very important to build self-confidence, have a high self-esteem. And where does that come from? It comes from you feeling that you are enough for yourself. You are beautiful. You are intelligent. You are amazing. You don't need validation from anybody. You are equal as every other human being. And that you can do great things when you put your mind to it. This is how we can build our self-confidence. Okay. Okay. Yes, the media, the mass media keeps telling us the opposite. The mass media keeps telling us to believe that we're inferior, to believe that we're underdeveloped, to believe that we're savages, to believe that we have not reached the standard of, of what a human being should be. Yeah, of civilization. Of civilization. Mm -hmm. This is what the mass media keeps telling us every single day. You look left, you look right, you look on the news, you look on social media, everywhere you turn to, it's portraying the same message. And then we grow up with this message and our minds develop to be like that, to be conditioned like that. Yes. Yes. You know, let me give you this um, 
example of Pavlos exp experiments of conditioned um, thinking. He has a dog and then he rings the bell. Anytime he rings the bell, he brings food for the dog. And he kept doing this over and over again. Anytime he wants to bring food for the dog, he rings the bell and brings the food. And then there was a day he rang the bell and he didn't bring food to the dog. But when he went to the dog, the dog was already salivating. Huh. This is what we call conditioning. You see something over and over and over and over again, even if you are not conscious of it, it is in your subconscious. Sure. So how can we break away from this? Something that we've grown up to be, something that we've experienced for the larger part of our lives. When you learn something, the only way to tackle it is to unlearn it. Sure. And that is why we're trying to put positive images out there. We as I and Ebo Entertainment, we try to keep putting positive image about Africa out there because there is so much negativity. There is so much negativity out there. And the only thing you can really do is to... To promote, to promote people that keep promoting Africa in the positive light. Yes. And this is a way you can contribute. To help others, to free others from mental slavery, you have to unlearn what you've already learned. And how do you unlearn? You learn by listening and seeing a lot of negative things. You unlearn it by listening and seeing a lot of positive things yes it's like replacing it's like replacing the, the bad with good because most of the time as africans we just say we we kind of know on the conscious level that some things are not right and some things are not in place but it is very difficult because as you said we have somehow been been conditioned to believe these things as being true an example, because a lot of people watching right now may say, yes, they're going to make a positive change. But sometimes it's very difficult to even know where to start from. Hmm. I know a lot of people that are um, probably not um, fluent in English. And because of this, it dents their self-esteem. It, it, it makes a very negative impact on their self-confidence. And when they go out there, they don't want to speak because they feel like, oh, they cannot compare themselves with an American or with an European or something. But I tell you what, all those other European countries, for example, most of them, they're not great English speakers. Sometimes if you hear an Italian speaking, he or she might have an Italian accent. And he's not frowned at because he's considered white. So why should someone who has... Um, a Ghanaian accent to be frowned at. Why should someone who has a South African accent be frowned at? English is not our mother tongue. English is not our mother tongue. So, so that is the first step. When speaking English, for example, anyhow you speak it, it's okay. As far as you're learning and you're improving because you want to interact with the outside world not to compare yourself with a so-called better English speaker. Do not let the accent fool you into categorizing yourself into a class of, oh, this person is a higher class. Maybe I have lower IQ. That's why I cannot speak English properly. For example, I remember when we were trying to learn Turkish, it was not easy because it is not our mother tongue. We would speak and people might laugh, but it's okay because I am learning. So if you're from the village, if, you're, if like your native language is different from English, just take it easy on yourself. Those are the little, 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 little ways. And again, most Africans, I notice, do not enjoy wearing their own African-made clothes. 
because they feel that if they wear these clothes, they even look blacker than ever. Hmm. You can wear whatever clothes you want to wear. But when you now start feeling that if I associate myself with the Ankara trend, with the Danshiki trend, then I'll probably look darker than possible. And I don't want people to start looking at me like, what kind of clothes is this? What kind of beads are you wearing? Oh, what kind of shoe is that? You know, we have African made shoes as well, like slippers and bags. You don't want people questioning you because you're ashamed of your heritage. That is the underlining reason why you might not want to do this because you don't want people to question what you're wearing but if you're proud of what you're wearing oh i'm wearing a danshiki do you know danshiki is an african made clothes yes it is from africa and we have clothes in africa yes this beads it's made in kumasi for example if you're wearing a bead yes yeah, made in kumasi and it is made like this and, and speak about it proudly when we talk about our history we should start speaking about it without being angry, without feeling like they're trying to pressurize us and make us remember how, how we were once slaves or something like that. Because no, we were not never slaves. People just came here and they exploited our ancestors and that time is long gone. That's been about 400 years ago. Africans, we need to leave the past behind and move forward. Yeah, you're very right. And another thing I want to point at, you were talking about not being proud of the African heritage and not wanting to associate with even African clothes because it still boils back to mental slavery because we feel the Western, anything Western is better. Anything Western is more civilized. So we don't want to look savage. We don't savage. want to look more savage than hmm. we feel we already are. Another thing that is a byproduct of mental slavery is bleaching, for example. Hmm. You see even Africans on social media commenting that, oh, why is this person so dark? Why is this person so dark? Oh, this girl is too dark. Oh, this Sudan girl is too dark. This Ghanaian girl is too dark. What do you mean someone is too dark? Or, or as Africans, let us Africans. let us let us really spell that out. As Africans, I'm listening. I have so much to say on that. And we keep saying this. And then, even Africans, we've seen the the skin color, white skin color, to be so perfect that we want to imitate it. And then several people pressure themselves with that. And start using bleaching creams because you check on the internet, you watch movies, you see adverts, you're seeing white people. Everywhere you turn around, you're seeing white people as a standard of beauty. Any product you're buying is being advertised by white people. And then this, this subconsciously keeps telling you white skin is better. White because skin yeah, white, white skin equals beautiful. Equals beauty, beautiful. And because of that, you now think to yourself, oh, I want to be beautiful also. So if I want to be beautiful, let me bleach my skin. And that is why you see a lot of Africans are now bleaching. And this is a byproduct of mental slavery. It is. Just because we want to be equal, to what we are being shown on TV, on mass media, we go out of our way to do that, to bleach our skin. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. Black sure. skin is beautiful. Black skin is beautiful. Don't let any old person tell you otherwise. Sure. Don't ever feel ashamed to walk around walk around with your head high be black and be proud be black yeah. and be proud yeah. Higher, yeah um yeah this is this this is another angle which i'm happy that you you're speaking about i've heard i've heard and i've seen people 
say, oh, that guy is too black. I don't think I can date him because uh, how will my children look like? Hmm. Do you understand? African girls will be like, oh, that guy is too dark. Or, eh, I don't know what my children will look like if you understand what I'm saying. What kind of mentality is that? And I've seen and heard black guys also say, no, that girl, she's just too dark. I, I can't date her. I, I know someone personally who have said, I don't even know why Davido is dating Chioma, for example. Like, they're finer girls now. And what he means by finer girls is that they are fairer girls. Because hmm. Davido, as um, a celebrity, definitely has met and seen a lot of ladies around the world, from dance videos to shoots and all that. So having him date a, a, a dark-skinned girl is kind of shocking because most of our celebrities, they date all these um, mixed-race girls, you know, they date white girls. And tr to be honest, I do not have any problem with one falling in love with any race they choose to be with as long as it's genuine love it's like an egg the egg might be brown white whatever on the outside but it's still the yolk and still the same component on the inside so as long as you're a good person on the inside that's the most important thing but now projecting onto black girls that they should feel inferior because they are not lighter to their counterparts that is where the problem lies Appreciate your neighbors, appreciate your partners. Choose them as the color that they ask. I know some people might even be breaching because of their partners. Hmm. Some people don't do this thing because of themselves, because they want other people to perceive social them. Pressure. Yeah, social pressure. Because when they go on social media, what pictures are getting the most likes? It is the white skin girls. It is the Kim Kardashians and the Kylie Jenners. It is those lookalikes, those plastic surgery looking bodies. They're the ones getting more likes. It is the, 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 the people that are going as nude as possible on social media that is getting more likes. So eventually when people also want a sense of a, um, attention to themselves, they start copying. So also another way to stop the mental slavery is to stop copying others. Stop the copying. Stand unique in yourself. Yes, you can see something that someone is doing that is good and infuse it into your lifestyle, but not anything that as soon as you see it, it makes you first feel inferior before taking a change. Anything that makes you first feel inferior is not something to, to, to change yourself for at all. If you're doing it from a perspective of, of, um, of, of inferiority complex, then you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. Yes, I, uh, you said a lot of very important um, statements. And another thing is that even when we view media in Africa, that is African produced media um, content, these are the same messages we keep getting that white skin is better. Yeah. You watch a lot of music videos, you watch a lot of music videos, you watch a lot of um, movies, African-made movies, and that is all you see, the representation of a fairer skin girl, that this person is more beautiful, this person is more beautiful, and that is what you keep. Let me join Ayo again. Okay, well, thank you. Come back. Thank you. And that is what we keep in our minds, I was talking about all these um, videos, even videos produced by African artists or by actors and actresses. They want to portray as, they want to present themselves as white as possible, just to match the Western standards. And then we watch these things and then we want to be like that. So apart from Western mass media, even African countries should start including an, the average African into the, sh into the media. 
True. True. Very true. Because um, for there to be a change in, in the near future, it is how we start portraying these things today. It is what we start leaving behind now. And that's why we're doing videos like this. And hopefully they remain on YouTube forever. And hopefully they, we don't even have enough reach because even social media sometimes do not favor such content. Yeah. If we're up here now trying to dance and show you something else, we probably will have a million views. But because we're talking about something very important to the black race, something that could change the course of our future for like positively forever, it gets very little attention. And, and you guys too watching us, you contribute a lot to whether or not this message goes far. Because very few people want to read. Like, I don't know whether you, um, we talked about this already, but there was some, somewhere I saw that if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Africans, we have a very poor reading culture. Let us be honest with ourselves. Because it is when you can identify the root cause of something that you can truly effect a positive change. We need to read more. And when I say we need to read more, we need to read things that will feed our minds positively. How to do away with psychological trauma. What is mental slavery? How can I effect positive change in my environment? All these things will contribute to a better future. Not just being angry all the time at the media, oh, they're not doing this enough, or oh, why, why do they keep victimizing us? Why is it that if I go to the airport, they would segregate the black person and do so much thorough checking that maybe probably the person is carrying uh, drugs or something like that, you know? But it is until we ourselves start working on ourselves and when you have a positive mind change, I'm telling you, it's going to naturally radiate in your countenance. It's going to naturally radiate on how you carry yourself. People will see you and they will respect you because you, you respect yourself on a mental level. But when on a mental level, you've already compared yourself a million and one times to every other different race you see on a daily basis, then when you're in a gathering, the way you think about yourself is how other people are going to treat you as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, like you were saying, how can we solve mental slavery? Through education. Education of the mind. Positive education of the Positive mind. Positive education of the mind. And it said that the man who is not able to develop and use his mind is bound to be the slave of the other man who uses his mind. His mind, true. We have to educate our minds positively. Learn about African history. And when I talk about African history, African history is not all about slavery. African history is not all about colonization. That is what they make us believe, that we don't have history and that our history is only slavery. It is not. Slavery is just an, an interruption of African history. Hmm. So we have to be reading these things and learn about African history, learn about African culture. It's not something you should do just once a year during Black History Month. Black History Month on February, and we all come out and say, oh, this is Black History Month. Yes, this is our month, things like that. And then March comes, and then we all relax. This is a continuous process. It is. The process of, of eradicating mental slavery is not a one-month job. It's a lifelong process, because after we emancipate ourselves, that is the only time we can pass the positivity to the next generation. Because mental slavery has been passing from one generation to the other and to the other, it is high time we break that chain. Exactly, we should start telling another story. We should start building different conversations, you know? Exactly. After we become aware, because the first step to change is self-awareness, is to actually figure out what the problem is. Now that we're figuring out what the problem is, we should change the conversation. 
when you're in gatherings and you're telling stories to your friends, tell them positive stories about Africa. Hmm. Tell them the positive side because every in every community, there's always the good, the bad, and the ugly. But what the media does with the Western world is they always try as best as possible to project and fund the positive side. Hmm. It's just like you're going for an interview. You're going to wear your best clothes. Why don't you say, oh, I have one clothes I usually wear if I want to clean the house. Since it's my clothes, then I can wear it to an interview. No, you won't do that. You're going to go to that interview with your best outfit because of how you want to be perceived, because of how you want the person that is going to employ you to perceive you. The same thing. When you leave your home as an African in the morning, mentally prepare your mind. Look in the mirror and say, I am great. I am amazing. When I go out there, no matter the prejudice I face, I do not care because I am confident in who I am. I'm telling you, when you go out there and people ask you questions, you just smile through the questions. You will not be angry. You'll be like, oh, come, let me school you guys. You, so you don't know, oh, Africa is beautiful. We have 54. Change the conversation. They want to bring up the angry part in you by posing those questions they already have answers to. But it is your own reaction that will start making them feel like, oh, I think these people already know how powerful they are. I think these people know that they are more than slavery. So these people actually have a different conversation. Be that person in Europe to say, hey, we have 54 beautiful African countries. You should visit one of them. You should visit. If you don't know, I can, I can show you countries on Iron Ebo Entertainment. You can go and watch the videos to learn more because right now I don't have time. Maybe I have classes and I have to go. Smile. And I promise you tomorrow they won't come to you with another stupid question because they know if they come, you're ready to tackle the negativity with positivity. Another thing I want to say about the mental slavery is our, is our um, school systems. The school, the educational system needs to change because what we're learning in school is not helping us develop ourselves to be free from this mental slavery. In fact, the school system, which is supposed to empower us, which is supposed to make us better, is doing the opposite. It's teaching us the opposite. It's teaching us that the Western world is this and that and better and we should worship it. And then it's teaching us that Western products are better. Western uh, education is better. Everything. It teaches us that everything that is not us is better. So we have to also revitalize our educational system. Let our children from little ages, from kindergarten, they should start being taught positive things about Africa. Yes. They should start being taught positive things about Africa, about African inventions. There are several African historians that have written amazing books. Sure. How many of these books are in the curriculum? How many of these books are being read during literature classes? So we have to really change our educational system also because this is going to really help our mind and our mental development. True. Very true. Very true. Like um, there was a post I saw on, I'm not sure whether it was Ghana Post or something on, on, um, mm -hmm. on Instagram. And it was an illustration of a Ghanaian book. A, a, a primary school Ghanaian book, and they put head, they were actually listing the parts of the body like head, arm, shoulders. And for head, on the uses, they put head used for carrying load. Hmm. Like seriously. And, and the person that made the post went on to say, Ghana education, like educational system, how can you let children from that young age, already be learning that head is used for carrying to hawk food. 
when the child grows up and they he's thinking what should i do with my life oh maybe i can start selling things on the road that's the automatic because that is what he or she read in school why can't you say head is for critical thinking the head has the brain which can be used to influence um positive changes i mean why can't there be any other use for head than to carry load you get what i'm trying to say so even though these messages they're very subtle and they're so subtle that at the first glance you never see it as harmful they're like subliminal messages you never see it head on as harmful and that's why most of the time we just brush a lot of things over when people make comments but they are very terrible and some are very very racist but they come off as very cool i'm going to make an example because i know i have my turkish um i think i see some turkish people um commenting in turkish for example because now we really have to speak about this thing so that even our um people from other races that truly like the black culture might also have learned some things because we are in this together as as we are breaking free mentally they also have to break free mentally on how they project some of the things that they have learned from their own parents to other africans because that is the only way that our future collectively as different people can be better assyrians will tell you um or 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 turkey should tell this satkat for example satkat now satkat in a normal meaning it is very harmless it means what is the time it is very harmless if someone asks you what is the time i mean why should you take an offense with that but the denotative meaning and connotative meanings to things you have to understand the denotative meaning to satkat is look at your blasking to remember how black you are that is the real underlying meaning hmm. that is why i'm saying sometimes some people say some things they know the intention behind what they're saying but they cover it up is like taking poop and putting hmm. cake icing on it they know they're serving you shit sorry to use that word they know they're serving you nonsense but they expect you to take it well because they have quoted it well no i'm saying no it's not going to work anymore you should stop doing it you should stop if you're watching and you are from a different race from the black race stop asking your black friends stupid questions you already have the answers to stop making them feel uncomfortable in schools because they came to your country to come and study if someone came to turkey to go and study someone came to germany to come and study you have germans going to america to go and study not because they don't have schools in germany you have turkish people going to spain to go and study not because so if someone comes from nigeria to turkey to all these countries to come and study stop making them feel like don't they have a better educational system it is the world and it has been created for us to freely explore anyhow we like it so someone coming to experience your culture should not make them feel like did i make the wrong choice let us mm-hmm. embrace if someone comes to nigeria let me embrace that person that oh you've come to share my culture you've come to share out of our knowledge because that's the only way we can go ahead not just as a race but as a whole human race like totally you're very right you're very very right Hmm. Is there anyone that wants to join in? <laughs> yeah, is there anyone that wants to join in? Oh, I didn't post the invite, the link for the invite. I'm posting the link for the invite. If there's anyone who just wants to join in briefly, let us know because I think we're wrapping up now. We're wrapping up very soon, yeah. So, um Yes you guys, guys are... education 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 let us educate ourselves let us educate, educate ourselves, ourselves. Yeah. and let us freely and positively and happily educate other people hmm. when they say you're angry they're only going to make you more angry so you have to change the perspective at which you see yourself because if you see yourself as you're giving someone knowledge you're not going to be angry about it you're just going to see the person as 
oh, you do not have um, the information that you need, and I will give it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I just that, remember that something. Energy. I just remembered okay. something that I wanted to make contribution with when I was talking about how we are being, we're, we're, how we are being formed from childhood, and that brings me to cartoons and all these um, things that children watch. There are several times that um, people have now come to realize that. Several words in cartoons or rhymes and poems are that we learn in schools that we learn in schools are racist. But we are being taught these things. So can you see that this thing actually starts from from the roots? I'll give you an example. Black, black, black ship. Have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three. Bags full, one for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy who lives down the lake. Who is a black ship? Who is the master? Who is the beautiful dame? Who is the little boy? It sounds very harmless, but why black ship? In hmm. fact, black ships are very rare. Yeah. To be honest. But why was a rhyme made around it? And so, honestly, one has to be very careful with the programming that one listens to because a lot of things come off as very subtle, but they are deeply rooted in racism. Deeply rooted in racism. And that is Someone said Malcolm X, what? He said, Malcolm X said, education is our passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Very, very true. Very true. Very true. Thank you. Um, we have to educate um, ourselves. Um, on the real. Thank you so much. We have to educate ourselves and we have to change the present educational system we have update it to teach us to prepare for life, to teach us to prepare for the future, to teach us to be bold, to teach us to be self-confident, to teach us that we can develop ourselves, we can develop our countries, and we can do amazing inventions. This is what the educational system should be about. Exactly. The, the system should stop teaching us to be on the, you know, constantly be on the defensive side. You know, before someone says something, you're already trying to defend, blah, blah, blah. Real and genuine self-confidence gives you peace of mind. It gives you peace. You're not worried what any other person thinks. In fact, you don't need to even prove any point when you're really confident in who you are. Hmm. And it makes you less, less defensive. It makes you less, less defensive. Because I feel like as Africans, as Blacks, we need to remove ourselves from that position of constantly being victimized, you know, constantly being victimized. If you're in an airport, for example, hopefully by the time all this corona issue is gone, and they tell you, oh, come aside, step aside, um, let us do a routine check, don't start feeling upset. Now, is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm this? You know, if I, maybe if I was not black, I would not be treated like this. This in itself is mental slavery because you're already feeling that you are being put aside for a check because you're black. But just take it as, okay, this is an airport. Anybody could want to harm anybody here. So if they just want to do a routine check, it does not, it's not because of my skin color. They're just doing their job. Let us start seeing these people as plainly they're doing their job. We need to stop feeling victimized at every little thing that is being said or done to us. This is the only way we can, we can truly free ourselves. Even if that is what they mean, that is their business. That doesn't have to be my truth. Someone's um, projection of what I am is none of my business. But that's what they think. What I think about myself is the most and only important thing. Yes, Ayo, thank you so, so <laughs> much for joining us. And <laughs> I'm saying that if you're a guest, it's Ayo. <laughs> I'm a guest, I'm a guest. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, guys, you've heard what we have to say, and thank you so so much for tune, tuning in. What can you do? The question is, what can you? What do can you do? Yeah, to, to effect to effect changes that One, will affect us on a mental. Don't forget yes. mental. One thing you can do is by suggesting our channel to your friends and family, sharing this video and our other videos that are spreading positive vibes about Africa. Send them to your friends of any race. Send them to your friends. Send them to your family members. And let this be the things that are uh, that people are watching. Let this be the things the eyes are seeing because that is what the eyes are going to transfer to the brain. Sure. Okay, yes. Guys, yes, it's that's it for today. Um, Thank in, you. Later today, we'll be uploading a video. So stay around and check out our new video that will be coming up. Thank you so, so much, guys, for joining us. We really appreciate your support. And see you in our next video. Have a great day and stay safe, stay healthy. Stay safe, yes. Wash your hands. <laughs> yes, guys. and be happy. Be happy. This is going to be over soon. You know, do not worry. There's nothing that is static in life. Change is a constant thing. This is not going to last forever. So whatever you can do to, you know, update yourself, skill wise, talent wise, just be doing it. Use this period as a way of equipping yourself positively so that when you get out into the world, you are ready to take up the world with so much positivity. Bye, guys. Signing out from Peace out. Signing out from Peace out. Peace out, guys.